Hi there, and uh, welcome to this video about using variables in Scratch. Now I've got a Scratch project here where I've got a couple of sprites. I've got a cat sprite here, which uh, allows me to move my, uh, my, uh, my cat, if you like, using the left and right arrow. So if I play it like that. And I've also got a sprite here of a bunch of bananas. And if my cat touches the set of bananas then it hides them okay so let's just have a quick look at that so if i actually run this and move it over there and it hides the bananas great so what, I'm, what i'd like it to do though is i'd like to be able to keep score i'd like to effectively have maybe a whole bunch of sets of bananas and every time the cat touches a banana the or a set of bananas, the bananas disappear and then the score goes up by one, something like that. Now the problem that we have is that in any programming, from one line of a, uh, of a script to another, the program is unable, if you like, automatically to remember certain values. So we need to be able to actually store that information ourselves. So what we need to do is to create a variable. Now a variable is basically a, a space, like a named space in the computer's memory that allows us to store values so that the program can remember them or recall them or reference them from one line to the next. So we can keep values like score and other things we might want to use uh, in our programs and keep them for, uh, for, for us to use. So how do we actually go about that? Well, first off, we need to go to the variables uh, section here. So we've got the different sections here with the different uh, colored blocks, if you like, for us to use. And if we go to make a variable. So in this case, I'd like to try and name my variable something a bit more useful than uh, variable one, as an example. So we need to sort of try and name it with what we're gonna use it for. So I'm gonna keep use this for score. Now we get a choice, do we want to use this for all sprites or for this sprite only? Well, in my case, uh, although I'm probably going to use it just for that, that set of bananas, I'd like to also be able to use it for other bananas that I'm likely to use, or you know, if I duplicate this. So I'm going to choose for all sprites. Click OK. Um, it's also possible, as an example, let's say I decide to do a different set of fruits with a different score then I'd still like to be able to reference score from there, not just from within the set of bananas. So I'm gonna put it in there like that. So you can see my variable has appeared up at the top here. Now I can choose to take it off of there if I want by just unticking this box there. But in this case, because it's, it's a bit like a game, I probably do wanna sort of see where I'm at with the score. So I'm gonna sort of leave that up there. Now, the other part of this then is, well, I need to do a few things with this within the actual game. So basically, in my banana script here, what I need to be able to do is when I initially start the game, I'd like to set score back to zero. So I'm gonna put thing in here. So set score to zero. And this is what we call initializing the variable. So that's when we first create the variable, this is what we need to do with it. So set the score to zero so that every time I restart the game, it's going to be zero. Now, when I've got here, so if it's if the set of bananas is touching the cat, then it's going to hide them. But I also need to change the score at that point. So I'm going to put change score by one on here. Now, if it was by 10, and I could go in here and change it to 10 as an example, but in this case, I'm gonna keep it to one. Okay, and we'll see how that works. So if I now uh, run my script again, okay, and come across here, hopefully when I touch the set of bananas, you can see the score has now gone up by one. Okay, now if I had a similar thing for another set of bananas, so if I duplicate that, let's just have a go at that, and so if I duplicate that sprite, okay, and put that one maybe here. Okay, let's just move it over. Right, so if I 
now run that so let's score up to one score up to two so we can see how that's working now across these two different sprites because I've got my score in there okay now I'm just going to stop that if I reset it of course we should find that score goes back to zero yep so it's reset it let's just stop that now so that's how we use, or there's an example of how we can use variables in a Scratch project. So we need to create them. We need to make sure we initialize them, okay, by setting their initial value. And then we can change that value uh, within our program. Now, the other thing to uh, mention with this, let's, if we take this example as a, as a program, I could use this for other things in here. So as an example, let's say I've got a, an amount that I would like to give a score for a set of bananas, so let's say one point, but let's say I've got an amount that I'd like to give for um, a set of grapes, as an example. Well, if I create uh, a variable called banana score, as an example, and set that to one, I could place that inside of here, yeah, and inside of here, yeah, and then I would be able to use that. Now you might look at that and go, well, what's the point in that? Well, if I set it carefully and I choose where I set it, then if I have, let's say, 20 sets of bananas and I decide that actually a banana should be worth two, then I'd only need to change that in one place. When I sort of in, when I initially create that and initialize its its value, I could set it to two and then it would work for all the other sprites in one go. So it can be a way of making your code more efficient as well and also more readable. So as an example, if this is change score by uh, banana score, yeah, then it makes it clear that that one is representing the score that you get for the set of bananas rather than just a random one. Okay. Similarly, if I go into my cat sprite here, I have the speed that the cat is moving at, which in this case is two steps or minus two if it goes back. Now, I could be quite clever with that and actually set that up as a speed variable. Okay, and then depending on how I, uh, you know, what else I did in the game there, I could sort of change that as well. So there's lots of different ways we can do it. And generally speaking, if you look at it, when you're using values, you might look at it and go, well, is, would that be better or more efficient if I'm using a variable instead? And certainly if we need to remember a, a value from one sort of line in the script to another, then we need to be thinking about using a variable. Okay, thank you very much.